All right, fourth graders, let's just do a quick little review about weathering. Weathering can happen in two ways. There's physical weathering, when rocks roll down a mountain and crack and break. When the ocean, the, the waves push this, the rocks back and forth along the shore and that cracks them and breaks them. So physical means where rocks break into pieces by nature. And then there is chemical weathering, and that is when acid rain uh, starts to dissolve, to chemically change the minerals inside a rock. And the mineral that is most affected is the mineral called calcite. Now, we've t that was weathering, when rocks are broken. Now we're going to start talking about erosion. And erosion is when rocks are moved by wind, ice, and water. Sometimes when there's erosion, there's also weathering. When rocks move, they can break. But one of them is predominantly breaking rocks, weathering, and erosion is when rocks are moved. Today, we're gonna to learn about erosion and we're going to use something called a stream table. I want to make a mixture of soil that has the same components so that every time I do this experiment, it has the same type of soil. So I'm going to make my own mixture of soil. The first thing I'm gonna do is put in one liter of pebbles, one liter of gravel, okay. one liter of sand, put in about a liter of powdered clay, okay. so one I'm liter of soil. And um, now I'm gonna add a little water. Because so I have created a plateau for my stream table. I have one and a half liters of pebbles, gravel, sand, clay, and soil, like humus, organic matter, here. I created a flat topped with a cliff, and that uh, earth, that landform is called a plateau. Then I'm gonna add a ruler, and then I'm gonna use this bowl. And do you see, hmm, the bowl has a hole in the bottom of it. This one is a small hole, and it's called a standard rainstorm. The second bowl has a larger hole, and this one is called a flood. And we're going to see what happens to this plateau when different amounts of water travel over it. Now, I have a small stick here, a small uh, wedge, which creates a slope so that the water travels down the stream table. There's a hole there, and I'm going to capture the water in this container underneath, okay? So I'm going to put the standard one here, and I'm not going to move the bowl once I start to pour the water. I have one liter of water, and we're gonna let the entire liter of water go through. All right, here we begin. So you can see the water is coming out. And right now, it's kind of making a little pool on top of the plateau. I'm gonna come around. More and more water slowly starts dripping down. Oh, and now the water is starting to come down this slope. Oh, look at this. That soil has become waterlogged and if this was on a large scale, that would be like a, a mudslide. It appears that there's like a little canyon being formed there. And the water is going down because gravity is pulling it down the slope. You can see, look at that sand being carried away. It does not look like any of the larger, oh look, a new canyon is being formed. It does not look like any of the small, the uh, larger rocks are moving. Just the sand 
I don't see any gravel moving. Just the sand and maybe the clay and the organic matter. You see that large rock is not being moved by the water. The water's going over. Oh, I see a few small gravel pieces that were being moved, but mostly look at the sand. It's the sand and the clay that is being carried away by the water. The water just finished and I took the ruler off in the bowl so that we can look a little closer at the earth uh, materials and the shape of the canyon. So water went down that hill and I want you to notice there are some gravel pieces, but most of the material that was moved was the organic matter, sand, clay, and some, and some gravel, but none of the pebbles were moved downstream. And when we get to the bottom of the stream table, I only see some clay. I'm feeling it. I don't feel any sand in here. Up at the top where the river begins, that's where the larger rocks and materi earth materials are. But as the river moves down away from the beginning of the river, the materials get smaller and smaller. All right, we're going to move on to the flood bowl. So this bowl has the bigger hole at the bottom. So let's pay attention. It's the same materials. It's the same tray. I'm gonna push this back up a little bit. It's got the same catcher. Everything else is the same. Okay, here is, I'm pouring the water. Okay. Wow, okay, so first of all, it's happening a lot faster, right? More water is coming out, so the water cut through and created a canyon much faster. So a regular rainstorm was slow. A, a flood is really happening fast. I'm gonna add some more water. And look at the water just pouring down, pouring down that canyon. And it does look like even bigger rocks, like there's some gravel that's being moved down, lots of sand, gravel, even some of the pebbles were moved a little bit. There's less of a lake at the top. It's more of a small pool, which then immediately goes down a canyon. We are going to compare the two stream tables with each other side by side. This one is the regular rainstorm. This one is the flood. So let's just look at them from a distance. Is there something that you notice about the two stream tables just from a distance? Well, I notice that the flood moved a lot of larger materials. I don't see any pebbles moved by a regular rainstorm. It also looks like just the quantity of material. Look at the amount of material that's at the bottom that goes farther than the other stream table. So it, from my observations, the canyon was smaller and less material was moved in the rain, or just a regular rainstorm. But when you look closely at the stream table where there was a flood, much bigger material was moved, a greater quantity of material was moved, and it was moved a much farther distance. I want us to be able to actually measure how far these two uh, materials went. So on the regular stream table, the materials moved about 34 centimeters, but the pebbles 
did not move, right? They were very, they did not move beyond the original area. Now, let's take a look at the pebbles on the flood. On the flood, the pebbles moved all the way down to 25 centimeters, and the entire material moved all the way down to the end of the tray, which was 54 centimeters. Fourth graders, get out your science notebook. Go to the table of contents. Number 11 is erosion, and mine is on page 21. Then turn to this, that next page, and I want you to glue in this page, stream table observations. Stream table observations. And the first one, it's, I want you to write rain, a regular rainstorm. And the bottom one is flood rainstorm. And remember, I took some measurements of different things and I showed how far the pebbles went, how far the sand and the, all the different types of materials went. So I would like you to draw a picture, like a bird's eye view. When we did had the regular rainstorm, there was a nice big lake at the bottom and it cut a small canyon. And then it carried some gravel and some sand and then there was a little bit of silt and clay as it went down. For the flood, there was a very small pool and it cut a deep canyon right away. And there were large pebbles up to 25 centimeters away. Then there was some gravel and the sand and the material was carried much farther. So please make sure that you draw something like this in your science notebook. So today we talked about erosion and we, sh we compared two things. We compared a regular rainstorm and a flood. When there's just a regular rainstorm, erosion happens pretty slowly. It takes time. But when there's a flood, when there's a lot more water, when there's a lot more force, then erosion can happen very fast. We're gonna continue talking about erosion next time. See you later, guys.